Their mother was surely dead. It had been over three weeks since her children had seen her, and Mungo could imagine nothing but the most gruesome of scenarios. Momo Hamilton had been raped, and then she had been gutted with a steak knife that some long-haul lorry driver had bought using petrol station coupons. She had been trussed and the tips of her fingers hacked off before her naked body was slipped into the cold, brackish water of the River Clyde. Mungo followed his sister from room to room, conjuring the worst. I just know she's dead. Maybe, soothed Jodie, or maybe she's just on another bender. But what if she is dead? Jodie sighed. Look around. We're not that lucky. The children had come home again from school to an empty house and an emptier fridge. Jodie was watching her brother pace back and forth in front of the bay window, imagining all the horrible things that might have befallen their mother, listing the reasons they should go to the polis. They were in their school uniforms, matching navy jumpers over a striped burgundy and gold tie, except Mungo's tie was wrapped around his head like a bandage to soothe the itchy feeling in his face. She's fucked off before, said Jodie. Don't forget who you're dealing with. Jodie crossed to where he had been ploughing furrows into the carpet. She wrapped her arms around him, tried to quiet the fluttering inside his chest. He was only a year younger than her, but he had taken a stretch. It had come late, but he was taller than her by almost a head now. Jodie laid her cheek against the nape of his neck. He was burning hot. Any minute now she could walk through that door. 